Hello, this is Mr. Huffman. I want to go through activity 4-3, motion in one dimension. I don't like the word direction here. I prefer dimension. It's the physics teacher talking to me. So you should have read this and you should have watched this video at this point. So now we're looking at this problem. After school, a student jogged from the from school to the library. It took the student 35 minutes to get to the library, where he spent 10 minutes browsing and checking out a book. He then walked to the coffee shop on the same street. In 15 minutes, he spent 40 minutes sitting at a table in the coffee shop and reading the book before he heading before heading home. He walked home in 25 minutes and remained there until the next morning. Notice right here that it has this diagram and it shows the distances between each building. So I would suggest you take this and turn it into uh, a diagram that you can examine the problem with. So I would draw something like this. I have the school, the coffee shop, the library, and the home. And I also noticed, or I also noted that the school is at the origin, and then 1.2 miles is the coffee shop, and 2.1 miles is where the library is, and from the school it is 2.9 miles to the house. And then you think about the order of events here. So let's turn on a little arrow here and let's make it a fun color i don't know how about blue okay so you're walking from the school to the library and then you wait and then you walk from the library to the coffee shop and then you wait some more and then you walk from the coffee shop to your home and you stay there for the rest of the evening this helps you get a visual representation of the motions that are taking place now presumably this is all on the street I just moved the diagrams around a little bit so we could get kind of a order of events okay so the next thing we need to think about is the motion itself and turn it into a graph so we start at the school and we go to the library that's at 2.1 miles away. It took us 30 minutes to get there. And then we stay there for, how long did we stay? I've already done this video once. Oh, look at that. It said we stayed there for 10 minutes. Okay, so we have to stay at the library for 10 minutes. So my little dots I put here are wrong. This is 10 minutes. Okay, so we stay there from 35 to 45. And then it took us 15 minutes to walk to the coffee shop. So we're going to go to the coffee shop in 15 minutes. The coffee shop is at 1.2 miles from the school, and it takes us 15 minutes. So here's 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I am really off here, aren't I, with my little dots? Okay. I added some confusing dots. Ignore the dots. Watch me make this line. That's 1.2 miles. There's 10 minutes there's 15 minutes. So we're at one hour in. And then we stay there for 40 minutes, drinking coffee, reading our books. So there's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Okay. And then the next thing we do is we walk home and it takes us 25 minutes to get there. Is that right? Let's go back and check. So we walk home for 25 minutes. So we go from 2.1 miles to 2.9 miles in 10, 25 minutes. And then we stay the rest of the evening there. I tried to pre-plot these points and I made a bit of bad job of it. So it should look something like this when you're done. So we have the 35 minute walk, the 10 minute wait, the 15 minute walk, the 40 minute wait, the 25 minute walk, and the wait for the rest of the evening. So what you can do with this graph is you can use this graph to answer the remaining questions uh, under number one. Well, it's actually number two. So you follow the instructions. Be sure you make a distinction between displacement and distance. Those are different ideas. Be sure you know the difference between speed and velocity. If there's any questions, please let me know. And that's all.